Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Thankfully, today you're not stuck looking at me coding, because that's a, that's a treat. I, uh, you're in much better hands today, because I have my good friend, Lance, with me. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Good yeah, morning, good afternoon, good. everyone else. Lance, uh, why don't you reintroduce yourself a little bit, uh, tell us what you, what you do. Absolutely. Um, as Sam said, my name is Lance, Lance McCarthy. I am a manager of technical support here at Progress Software for our dev tools. So this is your Telerik UI controls, your Kendo stuff, or your reporting, everything that's underneath that you're familiar with for Telerik and Kendo, uh, that's what my team handles. So you run into trouble um, and we help you out. Yeah, yeah. Lance is underselling himself uh, as usual. Uh, he's awesome. And his team is awesome because like anytime you're working with anything, you know, Terari, Kenda UI, reporting, uh, testing, it is any, you know, support tickets, Lance and his team are the first line of defense and they are absolutely awesome. So Xamarin, what are things at right now? It, there, we have an end date in goal, right? Yeah, so the actual Xamarin and Xamarin forms, I believe it's May this year. May, that is yep. the technical end of life for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, even though technically that's the end of support, it doesn't mean like things are going to go up in flames the next day. Uh, your apps are going to be fine. But, uh, you know, Xamarin, like cross platform mobile app development, it's never easy. There are dependencies. You are building things on top of existing platform stacks like Xcode and iOS and, and Android versions. So there is a time limit uh, until which you can still build and push those apps to the stores because uh, Xamarin is not going to catch up on some of the SDK builds anymore. Um, so, now is the time, uh, absolutely a high time for folks to move off from Xamarin onto the new brave world of uh, .NET MAUI. Folks are trying to move from Xamarin to .NET MAUI, which is multi-platform app UI. It's the next evolution of cross-platform .NET. And now, in addition to mobile, we also target desktop. So we got iOS, Android, um, those are given coming from Xamarin, but we got Windows and uh, Mac as well now. So Lance, um, you have had a few apps uh, written with Xamarin, correct? That is correct, yes. Yeah, and that's, uh, I mean, uh, so the apps that Lance has written, um, I mean, they're not simple apps. They are, you know, they have lots of dependencies and they're real world, they're all in the stores. So it's a bit of a work moving them forward. Turns out there is no magic wand that's going to do it for you. You just have to understand the tech. You have to understand the moving pieces and then plot your uh, things over. So uh, Lance, if you're ready, uh, why don't we bring up your desktop and maybe start with what exactly is the present app right now? So I'm going to pull up your desktop um, right there. OK. So I'm looking at your browser. You are at uh, tilari.com. Uh, what are you showing us? This is, um, like you mentioned, let's uh, explain what the apps are, right? So you can have your sample apps that show you how to do one little thing, but we also want to give you a real world app that it can be used in a real world business or consumer scenario. So yeah. for what you're seeing here is our four sample apps for Xamarin UI. And these are real world things, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm the one who writes the Hello World apps. Lance is the one that writes the real ones that are in the stores. No, I'm actually getting Lance. I'm, I'm getting ready to push a Maui app into the stores. Uh, that's a separate conversation. I, I would like to love to have your eyeballs on it. But this, what Lance is showing, like for folks who are using Xamarin, and if you happen to be using Teleric UI, that's great. But no, you don't have to. If you wanted to look at a real code base for an app that's in the stores, these are great samples. Yep. It, it's precisely what you, you mentioned, right? Where it's everything else. It's the dependencies. It's what happens after going to the next page. Um, it's all of the, some people call it a headache. I actually like it because you get in the weeds um, okay. and you realize it's not so scary. And we do publish all of the source code for all of these. So nothing is secret except for the actual secrets like passwords to the <laughs> databases, right? But yeah, you can plug in your own password and the own URL to your backend and it will just work, right? Right, right. Okay, so the CRM app is the one that you are uh, trying to migrate over. So this is customer relationship management. And uh, can you tell us more about the app? Yeah, let me pull it up in the Microsoft Store. I figured this would be the easiest way to show it to you. 
Um, you can go to a Microsoft Store and download and use it right now. Um, or iOS or Android. Uh, all of them, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just easier to show it to you here. And this is the desktop variant of it. It looks very similar on iOS and Android. I just, you know, the flow fits the platform that it's on, which is the whole reason for using the multi-platform approach. Um, yeah. Let's pull up a couple of screenshots just to explain what a CRM is, right? Um, it is usually what businesses have to manage their relationships with customers and vendors and supply chains and, and things like that. Um, and in this CRM, we have our employees, we have our customers, we have our products, open orders, shipping and support. Like that, those are the main UIs in the application. Yeah, and we're looking at one course, You know, any CRM. Yep. And it's that's why people are familiar with the word that the acronym, right? CRM is like, oh, it's it's like Salesforce. It's like this, it's like that. And that's the basic idea with communicating what the application does. Um, in this case, it is a, a, a CRM for an art gallery, right? And they sell paintings from artists uh, and you have salespeople and you have customers and you're shipping. And this is the list of products. So we're showing nice UIs to represent the product and their prices appropriately. And then we have customers and customers existing orders. Now you as the developer, you're thinking about, okay, where's this data coming from? And they are databases, they're SQL server databases up in Azure. And we'll get to that momentarily when we look at the code. You have orders here, we have your, your data grid where you can do your filtering, your sorting, your everything uh, right in the grid. You can export it to Excel, that kind of stuff. And we also have a support bot. One of the, the adventures I took while building this was to use all of the features of Azure AI stuff, like the natural language understanding and nice. translation and that kind of stuff. And then finally, uh, the shipping. Best way I could think to visualize a shipping schedule is with a calendar, right? So the person using the app say, okay, what do I have to ship today? These are the things, this is what they're getting shipped as. And that's pretty much the app. Okay, so Lens, couple of questions right yeah. out of the back. Uh, first up, how long did it take you to write this app? Uh, if I were to combine the time, probably just under a year to get it oh, wow. highly polished. Yeah. Working a month or two, right? Yeah. To get it working a month or two, but to get it, you know, ready for the masses. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and this is the reality. And, uh, you know, when we go to, you know, hackathons where we say, like, build an app in a day, like, no, you don't. You, you Any <laughs> real app needs a lot of uh, love and care. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is an app uh, that's polished and it's in the stores. And my second question was, this was something that's written with Xamarin, correct? Yes, it is written with Xamarin Forms, to be more precise. Xamarin Forms. Yeah. So how do you have the desktop component? Are you using any renderers? This is using uh, basically out of the box controls from Telerik UI for Xamarin. So it is a UWP project. No, uh, yeah, under oh, the covers of the renderers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the renderers, yeah. But it, it works on UWP, so hence it works on Windows. Uh, easy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're looking at Visual Studio. Is this the code base? This is the solution for all of the projects that run it, including the back end. Okay. All right, yep. so maybe you can give us a walkthrough um, of what it is, like the yep. beast that it was before, and then what, so as you even like look at this app, like, uh, and you look at .NET MAUI, like what were some of the initial thoughts? Like, let's, let, let's start here with the app first, and then I want to pick your brains on uh, what were the challenges, you know, right off the bat. This is like absolutely what I would recommend for any developer who currently has a Xamarin Forms app and they're like, okay, I, I have at most a year to get over to Maui before things start breaking, right? That's kind of a realistic timeline, 10 months a year before yeah. Xamarin Forms won't have the SDK that you need to publish to Apple or to Google, right? You have, you have that leeway. Um, but this is where I re recommend you start, right? You open up your solution and you look at your projects and you're like, okay, what do I have to move? And what can be moved without changing anything, right? There are many, many things that you don't have to rewrite. That's the beauty of this is that yeah. uh, 
uh, David Ortnone team took the route that the XAML, your UI code, will mostly just work in .NET yeah. Maui. Yeah. Change a couple yeah. namespaces, that's about it, right? That's beautiful. So now we need to think about uh, the backend stuff and some of the connection to the backend stuff. And this is why it's good to start here. You yeah. look at your project and what do I have? So, yeah, and, and, and while, while you're diving in, just, just a quick thought here yep. from our good friend, Thindle. Um, like you said, like things take time. You, you have to really plan things out before you, you know, move, you know, lift and shift such a big app uh, from one runtime to another. Uh, Thindle is talking about, you know, uh, projects that sometimes, you know, clients have unrealistic expectations, but sometimes they understand that it's it's a big migration, some things that might just take take some time. Um, so um, you, you, or let me ask you this, like how long has this app been out in the app stores and um, it, it, are the users a concern, like the folks who have it? Uh, um, like if you already have a store app um, and then you republish it, uh, or, uh, can you republish it as a .NET Maui app or you have to kind of redo the numbering and the app name uh, anyways? No, you can swap out whatever you have in the store. So that is the application identity and yeah. what is in the binaries or whatever is published it as. Uh, is particularly on iOS and Android, you can just swap them out. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Windows you can too. Um, and to answer your first question, I'm looking at the store here. Uh, it was January 2019 is when I first pushed okay. this out to the store. So it's been yeah. out for, for four years, four plus years. Yeah. So, okay. All right, so um, help us understand what's in the code base. Why do you have six projects? Right, that, that looks scary. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's make this first part a little easier. So we have Android, Forms, iOS, and UWP. So everything I've just highlighted, that's the Xamarin Forms project. Those are the projects that get compiled into your four, three or four um, UI applications. Yep. The other two, we have a support bot app. Oh, let me get rid of that. And we have a CRM service project. Those are the what used to be known as mobile app services. So uh, the good old yeah. Azure mobile services. <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> what it is. And what does that mean? Uh, it is an ASP.NET um, MVC, right? MVC 5 is not that core yet at this point. And you publish this to Azure in an app service and it gets hosted. So it hosts your, your REST API at this particular point. Um, and inside it are controllers, right? This is the journey, by the way, that I recommend you take. You look through what you have for controllers um, and what do the controllers do? They connect to a database. So the, the, the base class is called table controller. It was the way that Microsoft had written the framework for mobile app services to abstract away the database side of things. Uh, people know entity framework, similar thing, right? Mm -hmm. And you have domain managers and all this kind of stuff. And most of this code was written out for you. So you get a sample app, like a to-do app, and then you use that and you build it off. But outside of that, you would take a look and say, okay, I have, these controllers that supply the data to a REST endpoint to my mobile application. So that's essentially the connection between the user and the backend and the database. The application doesn't connect directly to the database. It goes through the app service and then gets the data from the database as in its native form, turns it into C sharp CLR objects, and then returns it as JSON or XML to the client app. And the client app does the basically the opposite. It takes that JSON response, and turns it into an in-memory object, and C-sharp object, or whatever it might be, and then you show it in a list. Right. And that's what this project does. The other so, one, yeah, go so ahead. Yeah, let's stop here and ask some questions, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, this uh, CRM service uh, project, this is essentially uh, a wrapper, so you have controllers to do CRUD operations like create, read, update, delete over the entities that you have in the database. And I'm guessing the database is also in Azure? Yes, it doesn't have to be, but no, it, it, it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's under my desk, you know, why not? Right. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, but this is essentially standard, uh, you know, entity framework. As I'm seeing DB sets for employees, yeah. customers, products, orders, and you're doing fetch and gets and writes. Okay. Yeah. And it's done through the, you know, we have the customer object, we have the employee. Yeah. That that approach is familiar to anyone who's done any kind of entity framework. Right. 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 So when, when you're looking at this, you know, overall solution, like this project seems like it has no dependencies whatsoever on the runtime or the framework. Like this would work in Maui, right? Yep. Oh. Right. You, you could tell your Maui app to talk to this. Right. But we now hit our first major hurdle. The SDK and that for the client side does not exist for Don and Maui. Oh, right, right, right. Because yeah, mobile this services. is the biggest problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but, what do you I mean? Can, can you, so what uh, I'm, I'm just trying to think about your options here. So, it is at the end of the day, it is a RESTful service over a database. Yes. So, do you? I mean, I suppose an SDK will help because uh, you're you're doing a lot of calls. Uh, and oh, you you want some offline data as well now? You don't have to use offline data, but the the um, the restful service you're talking about, there Microsoft has now provided a new one that is for .NET Core. Now you got to remember, Xamarin Forms is .NET framework, so mm -hmm. there, well .NET standard, but still yeah. it's yeah. right. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it, Microsoft had to make a decision. Do we keep trying to force making mob, Azure mobile app services the way it is? Because it was very boxed up. It had a very strict set of standards and it, that had to be what it is and you really couldn't customize it that much. So instead of trying to push that forward, what they did was they said, let's take a step back. What can we do that provides the same thing but gives you flexibility to expand and do whatever you want? And as you mentioned, at the end of the day, it's just a RESTful service that talks to a database. So they gave us a new SDK. It's called Microsoft Data Sync. And it's essentially all of the same things. Um, and this tutorial here, how to use it. You can have offline if you want. What it does, it creates a little offline file using uh, mm -hmm. SQLite. Or you can do it in real time and only have online stuff. But here it takes you through the steps on how to do it. And, and it looks like this this is documentation right inside of .NET Maui docs. Yes. Okay. All right. So, well, actually, this one is Azure uh, docs, but the .NET Maui links to this, I see, I see. and okay, okay. yeah, it, it's easy to find. Mm -hmm. And there's other tutorials and videos that walk you through the same thing, because this isn't a new problem. Everyone who has some sort of backend service has to ask themselves that same question. Can I publish this and use it for Maui? You could if you manually made all the calls from your .NET. Yeah, Maui, it's too right? much work, yeah. Too much work, yeah. And you don't need to because Microsoft did it for us. They took all the logic from that was part of the Azure SDK stuff and moved it into this and made it more easy, actually made it easier to use and more friendly for the developer because you can use your standard entity framework approaches and no custom um, base class for the controllers and have to worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah. So essentially your uh, database can stay as is, but then you're gonna to have to replace what you had deployed for the mobile service with this service. And then at the end of the day, does it become like another app service thing that you can host? Yes. So you would have uh, a different URL for your yeah. client app. Um, yeah. We won't stay too long on this, but I just want to show you what it looks like when you do shift, right? So everything here on the controllers and models, right? So this is the same thing that we kind of have in the other one, but it's, there's your DB set, right? It looks, you can, you can basically copy paste everything from the old one and just change the base class and how it connects to the to the database is all the same. It's a DB context. Right. Uh, same models. I did not change a thing here. The only thing was the the base class a little different. So instead of just playing customer, it's an entity data table based object. And the controllers. Right. We were just looking at the controller for the other one. And it's a table controller. And we just expose some RESTful endpoints, patch, replace, delete. 
And then you publish this to Azure underneath another Azure app service. So you have a different URL. It's, it's essentially the same thing. But if I was to give you one takeaway that I love the most about this approach is that I can deploy it in, in a, a Linux container. You can run it in a tiny little container or you don't need no huge, big backend special Azure uh, Azure mobile app service implementation or it's just an ASB.NET Core app. Yeah. So uh, for the chat room here, I, I found, um, I'm just going to post the uh, links to the app and also uh, the source code. So if you wanted to follow along uh, some of the files and other things that uh, Lance is showing, uh, here's the GitHub repo uh, of everything that's in that code base. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing we don't have on GitHub right now is the CRM one, the MAUI one, um, because we are just about to release this. It's not published in the store uh, yet. Yeah, so this is hot new bits. Yep, hot, hot off the presses. It's like we just finished writing the Azure pipelines to build it, right? Nice. This is, we are at the very beginning of it. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, so you, you are kind of done with the move and shift. You are yes. just giving us a summary. Okay. And again, this is a big app, so we might not get done with all of this in one uh, episode. We'll, we'll invite Lance back over the next maybe two or so weeks. But um, if, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how long from the time you sat down with this code base in Xamarin uh, and from then on to now, where you are kind of getting ready to push the Maui app back to the stores, how long? I would say maybe three months of actual working on it, right? So there is periods of, of not working on it because I was waiting for Telerik UI from Maui to add a new control, right? Sure, sure. Right, yeah. That kind of stuff because it was still early. We were doing this at the same time we were building the Maui controls. So right. we're like at the very beginning of all of this. Yep. So. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. So yeah, and that, that's pretty realistic. I mean, even if now when you have uh, pretty much a one-on-one -on -one between uh, Telerik UI that we had in Xamarin versus Telerik UI in Maui, even if you you know started out right now, I would say like you know one to three months is pretty average for you know moving and shifting such a big app uh, over to a new runtime. That's key though. It, it's like we're talking about a large app with a lot of classes yeah. and a lot of things mm -hmm. that don't work out of the box, right? Right, right. Um, for many things, it's probably a less, right? right. Yeah. Realistically, a couple months. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, so I get the service part. You had to move from mobile services to uh, what's it called? Data Sync, Azure Data Sync. Uh, Microsoft Data Sync. So Microsoft they took out the Azure Sync. part of it. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So that's still the back end. But any anything else with the back end that you had to do? So they, you might have to make some executive decisions in your project on what you're going to move, right? And I did the same here. <clears throat> So yeah, before we get into the Xamarin forms, we have a support bot. So you remember mm -hmm. when I was showing you the app, there was a support page and talking about uh, natural language services and text analytics and, and um, all of that bot stuff. Um, we could have done it for this, but there was a lot of stuff that was not available in .NET Core uh, at the time. Now everything is Azure AI. so. Yeah, How much was changed. this being used? Yeah, things have changed. And this wasn't that valuable of a feature on the app. Uh, yeah. It wasn't being used often. And you have to make a decision on, is this worth an additional three months, four right. months to move this over? Yeah. Um, and you know, also, no. like you, you, you had this in 2019. This was way before chat GPT and AI yes. services and any of that stuff. Yes. I made my own chat GPT basically where it would recognize what language you're speaking, automatically switch to that language, get some intent if you're happy, upset, whatever, and then make decisions based on that. Um, and it, it was really just a demonstration of the, of the technology more than it was a great right. feature of the app in context of a CRM. So yes, it could look up, um, when an order was due or when this customer, how much money does this customer owe? That kind of stuff was the helpful part, but it wasn't really being used that much. Sure. People would just go over to the tab and look at the customer instead. Yeah. 
And, and this is a good point. Like when folks are looking at their real world customer apps or enterprise apps, and they are, you know, any migration is an opportunity to trim down fat and reconsider what you have and how much usage you have of those things, how much effort is it going to be to move and shift versus, you know, let's reiterate, uh, give you the latest and then maybe build on that uh, going forward. And for some companies, this could save you millions of dollars, right? And it's it's not really adding value to your application or for your users. And it's a perfect opportunity and time to put such things. So, yeah. 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 All right. So yeah, so yeah, we get the solution here and we have the, we know for a fact we need to move the, the RESTful service, right? And the support bot is on hold. It might be added in a future update, yeah. right? So, so support bot's on hold. Actually, one more, one more thought here, which is I think really important um, that our good friend Thindal is uh, bringing up. And I have seen this firsthand a lot. Whenever um, folks have a migration from one runtime, like the app needs to be migrated, it invariably ends up being let's pay back all our you know debt like all of the things that we have done wrong let's try to fix all of those things and refactor and then it snowballs into this gigantic thing that you're trying to do you really have to uh you know separate those things out and yes i mean you can reiterate and keep you know improving your code base everything uh, along the way but you have to be careful that you are doing the migration thing first and you know you can i mean your code base is never done you can always refactor you can always get better but don't make the migration effort the uh thing that uh collects everything all of the dust and tries to get rid of all of the things that you don't want yeah yeah what's going to hang you up right what, yeah. what is going to cause you to miss your deadlines and yeah. that's absolutely one of them Yep. Yeah, and also Tyndall is making the point that sometimes bringing your problems forward um, can be a better solution. Yeah, so don't try to fix everything. It's okay to bring some problems forward that you can iterate on. Get 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 it get off on the new runtimes first. Yeah, yeah, just get everything working um, to the point that it it has feature parity minus the things that you're cutting with the old one, and then. If, if they're low hanging fruit, sure. Sometimes you don't know what's low hanging fruit in the beginning and it's a rabbit hole, like you said, but for the most part, it's this is why this planning phase is so important. Spend a day or two doing this, whiteboard it. Right? It might sound silly, but whiteboard it because it's easier to see in blocks than it is in uh, a class, right? Or, right? or a service operator, so yeah. yeah. All right, so now you got the backend service, you got the chatbot uh, squared away. Now you're looking at purely the Xamarin app. Yes. Now we look at the views, um, the view models, the models in the UI app. Um, and this is where a major advantage, like we mentioned earlier, on um, what can be moved, right? So if I go to the shipping page, for example, uh, that's probably not a good example. Let's go to stick with the employee page. So if we look at the employees page, let me make this look a little cleaner. The search box, we have a list view and a busy indicator. So Out of the box, it yeah. would just work. What's that? The, uh, this would just work. Copy pasting this code okay, so into the model just works. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, okay, here, here, here comes the million dollar question. And I, uh, I, I agree with David and Mary uh, and, and the Maui team on certain fronts, uh, but then I also uh, try to see what is good for me. Did, were you enticed to use the upgrade assistant or did you just do a copy and shift? I just did copy and paste. Yeah. Uh, there was a, at the time that I was doing this, the migration tool didn't have cool Maui features in it like it does today. Uh, it has some nice stuff in it now. But for me, I just took the demo, I moved it in, took care of each error, saved it, and was done. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah. our, our friend Thindal is weighing in on uh, other fun things. I, I do have more hats. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, if you want me to switch, I, I have a whole collection of hats, not as big as uh, C-Sharp Fritz. He, he's got a whole hat collection, but I can switch if you want to. 
Um, yeah, the upgrade planner, uh, I have heard very good things. Like now it's integrated inside of Visual Studio. Um, it, it does a lot. But to me, it's, um, it, it's still like it's trying to do a lot. I would much rather um, hold its hand and, and do exactly what I want and no more. Because like the big challenge here is, you know, coming from this code base where it's Xamarin, you have iOS projects, Android projects. Um, are you moving to a single project um, going into Maui? Yes, because Maui is a single project uh, yeah. setup that has multiple TFMs. That's yeah. one of my favorite yeah. features of Dot ML, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, um, the way you can look at it, visualize it in your solution explorer is that you kind of still keep this Xamarin Forms quote unquote UI project that turns into your Dot ML project, and then all of these other projects go away. Yeah. And here's what you end up with just two on MAUI and your back end. And if I just give you a quick peek, this will be for a future episode. We don't have time for it today. But yeah, if we look at the views here, we have my views and customer pages, employee pages, all of that is the same as it was in Xamarin Forms. My customer pages, employee pages, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the reason why I mentioned we'll talk about it next time is because, as we just mentioned a few minutes ago, you, you have an opportunity to make some changes that don't drive you off a cliff. And one of those changes for me was to not use um, master detail flyout page setups anymore. Instead, I used a new shell. Oh, and interesting. The shell, yeah. So, in the model, oh, yeah. Okay, so a little story here. Uh, I, I have come around like you. So there are folks like Dan Siegel, um, Alan Ritchie, and others. Uh, I was in the same camp with them. Like, I did not like the shell. I did not like the navigation. I would much rather roll my own. It's just a lot of work. Uh, so I understand the shell is not perfect, um, but it gets you there most of the time. So I have come around to starting from the shell uh, for some of the nav, nav needs. Well, I didn't do it at first, right? And move all the code over and make sure it works as is, right? Yeah. Now at this point, okay, everything's working great. What can I make an improvement on that would leverage some cool new features of the framework? And shell was one of them because I switched from passing instances of pages around to using dependency injection. Right, so, right, that's a big benefit. Mm -hmm. Huge benefit. And uh, that was the, one of the shifts in approaches being used. You, the user doesn't notice a difference, but yeah. it means the developer seeing the improvement in memory and performance was amazing and ease yeah. of writing the code too. So actually one more question here for you, um, Lance, uh, yeah. this, uh, Sindel is weighing in. So the upgrade assistant is meant to either look at the whole project or individual projects. And when you right click and say, you know, move to this TFM, move to this project type, uh, the first thing it does is actually reuse like the .NET uh, API analyzer, that thing. So before it actually does anything, it's gonna tell you like, these are the things that you cannot move. These are the things that don't have the right namespaces. This is what I'm about to do before it actually does it. So did you ever run that or any of the other, you know, analyzers to see what things will invariably break the moment you just lift and shift a XAML view. Yep, absolutely. It helped me pre to prepare the plan. I did not have the the migration tooling do the migration for me. It informed me on what I needed to do during the migration. That's exactly that's exactly uh, the point. So, uh, so even if you don't want it to do the whole lift and shift, which might be a lot, use it to see what might break and, and just you know and get a get an idea, get a list of things that you need to fix. Yep. And some are wider impacting than others. So let's mm -hmm. say you have a view model that is doing this and and you realize, oh, you know, that is kind of a problem. I can probably fix that in one or two little things over here. Uh, but yeah, it is a a major benefit to create your to-do list. Right, because you do need a to-do list to do this. I'm gonna move the models first, right? Customer, employee, all the stuff, you move those first. Great, mm -hmm. it's working. I just changed the base class, ta-da, it's done. Yeah. Uh, okay, now it's time to move the views. Okay, now I'm having some problems because namespaces are different. 
a good example is uh, the XAML namespace. The old mm -hmm. ones have 2009. I think the new one is where is it? really quick. Let's take a look at the about page. Uh, 2021, right? So it's little things like that. Um, but they're easy to fix, but you just be prepared for them because it take a little time to go through all the different classes and change it. But it's kind of something you don't need to pick apart and understand why, right? It is just doing stuff. You fix right. it, you're done. Yep, yep. The other thing is uh, dependencies, right? So some new packages you might have had in the past don't just work in Maui because they did not publish a package with a .NET mm -hmm. 7 or 8 assembly in it. Mm -hmm. And one of those is like FF image loading. I use that to do some cool caching with the images so they don't have to keep getting pulled from the service. Um, oh, interesting. And, and in this case, it wasn't a problem. All I had to do is just make sure that I understood that I needed to install the .NET the dot Maui package for FF image loading. Mm -hmm. And that's part of your to-do list, right? It's like, okay, right. this one doesn't work. I put in this one. Yeah. And, you know, this is also an opportunity. Uh, I, I, I talk, you know, uh, nowhere close to what Lance does. Lance talks to a lot of enterprise customers, real people doing, you know, real, you know, uh, gigantic apps. Uh, but, you know, when I see people around uh, here and there and I talk to customers, one of the pain points that uh, any migration involves is your dependencies. Uh, and hopefully the library maintainers or people who you are taking a dependency on, they have moved forward. But if you really deep have a dependency that has not moved forward, um, maybe it's time you, you question how much that dependency is worth to you. Because I, I, I talked to somebody who is on .NET Framework and cannot move forward because something very critical is um, based on a library that hasn't moved forward. And this is where you kind of question, like for me to move my apps forward, how much do I really need that? Because that's going to, you know, hold your, uh, hold you back. Right. So, you know, uh, you might have, you know, end up with a case where it might be a little delayed, but if you have something that just has not moved forward from uh, older .NET days or .NET, you know, uh, four or five days, Maybe it's you. It's it's time you question how much you need that. Yeah, and that was a lot of them. The the motive behind Telerik UI for Maui, right? This isn't about the Telerik UI controls, right? The, the UI controls are part of it, right? There's only some pages where we, yeah, we're going to show off some of the cool features in the new controls, but everything under it is just .NET, right? So. All of these kind of problems that you just mentioned are there. And right in, right in front of me, I'm showing you uh, a couple perfect examples of that, right? So we have Skia Shop, uh, Views, Forms. We have the, the bot framework is exactly what you just mentioned, right? It's not there. How much do I need it? Do I need a delay bringing this to my customers because of that? Or am I just making an excuse myself not to do it, right? Yeah. You need to be honest with yourself on these things and get stakeholders involved too. get decisions from other people that are involved with the project and have a vested interest in what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you started um, plotting this, uh, Oh, hold on. Um, our good friend, Dan Siegel is here. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of friends, Speaking of friends with opinions, uh, yeah, no more bots. Um, uh, Dan, we just talked about, I don't know if you just joined, uh, Lance and me were talking about how um, many of us started out uh, not liking some things, some decisions, but uh, some of us have kind of come around. Um, like Lance and me are uh, using the app Shell nowadays in, in, in Dr. Mavi. I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's give or take. I mean, you don't have to use it, but... Uh, I think it's it's decent uh, with with Nav if you have a simple enough app. Sure, it doesn't do some of the you know view model to view model style uh, you know navigation. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lance, uh, Dan says he just threw up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be happy to see this then. Yeah, <laughs> everything now is all, and I'm loving it to be honest. Right, I love the fact that I don't need instances of anything. Right. And the shell just recognizes the type 
it knows I've registered a specific view or a view model. And to make things easier, I just, these can all be in one code block, but for visual pleasure, I like having the views being registered in one, one um, method and the view models. But the beauty of this is that it just works, right? If I want, um, let's go to customer page, right? For those aren't, that aren't familiar or are scared of dependency injection, Don and Molly is a perfect opportunity to become more comfortable with it. I, all I need to do is just say, hey, here's a, I, I need an instance of customer page. It, it requires this, right? This is a dependency on it. And the dependency injection framework will inject an instance right. of this. Yeah. Where the instance comes from is more technical, right? Is it a singleton in memory or is it going to create a brand new instance for you? Those are problems to worry about later. It just get used to using it and you'll like it much better than like, oh, bar page equals new page. And then that you have this instance of this page that you have to manually pass around and, and you know, you have memory leaks because of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, definitely like, so DI was, and, and this was like when in the early days of Dr. Mary, this was also something that the team fought quite a bit on. Um, so uh, the benefits are obvious. I mean, you you pay a little bit of price up front, like it has to load up all of your you know registered things in memory, but you know past that, like no more uh, you know newing up uh, view models and you know views, and you know you might be accidentally doing it in multiple places. Here it's just all one if you if you if that's all you care about. So things are definitely. I mean, I, I am much more of. Uh, uh, of a DI fan since Maui has implemented it than, yeah. you know, doing it yourself. Yeah. And then the whole shell thing, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, mixed opinions here. So you do what works for you. So Dan was uh, commenting on the fact that if you want to use the shell, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, uh, Lance, there's a micro Maui micro MVVM uh, package that apparently does things maybe a little cleaner. I, I have never used it. So, Something to look at, uh, but the shell out of the box is very basic URL style, you know, navigation. Um, but it's there to help, you know, most people get off the ground. But again, you don't have to use it. You, know, you can roll your yep. own. Yep. And Dan has some great packages out there too. Uh, makes a lot of this easier for the use and way more powerful. Um, but if, I guess what we really care about uh, about today's topic is you have this Xamarin Forms app and it's using layout page um, and it, or it's using this page or you just have one navigation page in the root and you manually swap out the content in it yourself. Right? Get that working first of all because it will. Right? They, they don't. I mean, if you have the old style master detail page, you will have to change that to a type of bio page but the functionality is the same. Um, to get that working first, and then you can make decisions on what you're gonna do next. So um, hold on here. Uh, is, this is the Maui solution we're looking at, right? On uh, still the Xamarin one. This is Xamarin form one. So we're looking oh, at the, the old one. one yeah. Right? yeah, okay. This is the root, the, the master page, which shows the menu on the flyout. Right? So yeah. I'm yep. listing all of the pages in the app, and the root page itself has, it makes an instance of that master page, which is in the pane. And then the main area, which is called the detail area, we have one instance of a navigation page and then we're manually changing out what is inside of that navigation page. And you have to worry about the paths and where you're coming back and forth from and pass references of things between the pages. For example, uh, if you select an employee, how does the employee detail page know what employee you selected, right? You can do it as a parameter. There's lots of different ways to do it, but you are kind of doing it manually in that case. Um, and Maui has two cool ways to do it. You can do it as a parameter. Um, it, we'll go into details on that in the next episode yep. of, of Maui Migration Chronicles. But, uh, <laughs> Some might uh, call it pain, but we call it <laughs> chronicles. At first, yeah, it was right. No, it, it, this is we're being honest, right? We're, at first, it's yep. like the the analyzer tells me all of this stuff is not going to work. Yep. All right. Now I'm afraid you don't touch it for six months. Um, <laughs> you try it again. Done. It seven comes out. You do it again. Okay. All right. Some things are working now. Things are back. Great. But this part still isn't going to work. Okay. Done. It comes yep. out. All right. All right. Hey, most of the stuff just works now, right? All I got to do is change a couple namespaces. Amazing. 
Um, yeah. And now you have Zimmer Forums ending in May and mm -hmm. realistically have 10 months to a year to get your act together. Um, so you got to think about it seriously and yeah. what kind of work <laughs> is it going to take? Put together yeah. your plan. Dan is using it as a reason to drink at eight in the morning. But <laughs> to, to your point, I mean, things were not as nice as, as they are now, like tooling, uh, framework. Uh, I mean, there will always be issues. There will always be things to fix. But definitely post.NET 8, things are much more of a stable ground to jump off. And uh, n now is the time. If you have yeah. you know put things off because it was scary uh, back in .NET 6, and it, and it was, and .NET 7, now you should really have a much easier time um, yeah. with the framework, the runtime, and and tool. Okay, so um, yeah, we we are already uh, almost at an hour. Uh, so we will uh, talk more about the details of the pages and and yeah. and how you move things forward. But uh, again, when you started looking at this Xamarin app that's in stores, um, you took out the bot. And you took out uh, the service that had to be replaced with a new service, um, but uh, in in terms of the app itself, uh, that is the core of you know how you'll move. Uh, oh, I did want to ask you like the service. Um, are you using uh, the, like can a data sync service be hosted the same way as any other service in Azure? It's even better. You can run it in a um, a Linux container. You can okay. run it as a Linux app service. You can run it as a Windows app service. You can run it on a Raspberry Pi or your house or a Raspberry okay. Pi Zero. All the okay. service really does is connect between your database and the front end app, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I even tested it in a Raspberry Pi Zero, um, which I had a little trouble because uh, it didn't support X64 code. So then I switched to a Raspberry Pi 4 and Docker on a Raspberry Pi 4 is full 64. So um, it works just fine there, as it does in Azure. Right? Azure has tons of more benefits, but the fact is, it is an ASP.NET Core app. And let me show these side by side. Oh, so, I, I remember one more thing I was going to ask you, but yeah. go ahead, finish this. Over here on the right is the old Azure mobile app service, ASP.NET MVC5, .NET Framework app. Right? You have mm -hmm. your web config and your all that kind of stuff. What really matters to you is what your data models are and your controllers, right? And over here, we have the new Microsoft Data Sync, and we have our models here. We have our DB context, which is almost identical, some small mm -hmm. changes. And we have our controllers, which connects to that particular table in the database. Yep. And with now, this one, uh, one thing. Quick, quick question here, Lance. Um, does the Data Sync SDK uh, give you things like templates where if you have the models, you could say generate the controllers and just the you know, crux of it for me? Scaffolding, uh, I believe so. Uh, that's part of the .NET SDK. I'd have to check up on that though. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically that's the scaffolding where you say, here's my class and then it'll build a model and a controller for you. I didn't scaffold on this. I just took the to-do item because when you do the, the new project, the new Microsoft Data Sync project, you get everything you need except the data model is a to-do item. Okay. So you just swap right. out the to-do item with your own thing and you are exactly. done. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, now, uh, aside from the backend service, uh, if you just look at the app, the Xamarin app versus the Maui app, uh, did you have uh, uh, did you have a time where you had to? Uh, and I'm asking this because I've had to do this myself. Like I have started a .NET Maui app, I have moved some things over, and then you know some updates happened. Like .NET seven came along, .NET eight came along. Something with the runtime happened where it just did not work for me anymore, and I was like instead of trying to migrate like from one thing to another, I could just restart another Maui app with the latest tooling, with the latest runtime, and then remove it over. Have you had a, you know, to do this at all? Yeah, and it, what's important to understand there is it's not necessarily the .NET SDK itself. It's that the Maui team added a lot more stuff and a lot more mm -hmm. capabilities to the project. And where most of that came into play is in something like this item group. Yep. where they added Maui icon support and then we create all the icons or even better uh, Maui fonts or Maui images and the raw assets. 
So the, to your point of I did a new project, started over, and then it created the project for me, is what you see in here. Resources. Is that too small? Do you see the resources folder? Yeah, I do, I do see yeah. it too. So that that was the reason why things started working after right. because right. all of that right. lined up. Yeah. Yeah, and and that that is the key benefit, you know, of shared resources that Maui brings to the table. And then one other thing, I don't know if Dan's listening. Um, one other thing that you know tripped me up, you know, going from you know Maui versions as as we have seen things evolve, um, workloads are always interesting to version because they're difficult to version because they go with the SDK bands uh, themselves. So I have had instances where I am trying to go to the new NuGet packages to get my workloads, but I have existing bands and that gets a little complicated. So sometimes I have just said, just give me a new, new Maui project, just do it new, fresh as it comes with .NET 8. So I know exactly what NuGet packages you're bringing down. My workloads are not messing me up because like, <laughs> This is what trips us up a little bit. Uh, this is where you, you have too much knowledge and that's bad because you are trying to update Visual Studio, which tries to do its own thing with the updates and the workloads. And then you go to .NET workload update and they overwrite each other a little bit. And that can be a pain point. One improvement I think they've done is you can see here, I've just listed the workloads, right? Uh, it tells you where the installation source came from. Uh, so you can kind of you get a little bit of more understanding of of uh, where it came from and what set it. But my advice there is after you're done installing Visual Studio stuff, come over here and then you update the workloads, and then that seemed to give me the best success instead of doing the workload update first and then Visual Studio messing it up, because the workloads happen at a faster separate pace than Visual Studio does. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, Dan doesn't spare words. Dan is like, whoever came up with workloads <laughs> needs to be publicly shamed. I think yeah. I think we know some of the folks. They're, they're not bad folks. They have the right intentions in mind, uh, maybe. So, so some things, you know, uh, you know, after things have evolved, it's easier to, uh, what do they call it? Like the vision, like the uh, near vision or so. Uh, this the same with like what was the thing that we did like XAML standards or even like .NET standards like now we can look back and say yeah maybe not uh, but you know that was the intention initially uh, to wrap everything up into a single SDK band but it's difficult to version. Yeah, I I'm I'm liking everything today. Um, in the past few years, have been an evolution of going through that. And, yep. and now is the time, not just because German Forms is, is leaving us, right? It is, I think, at the most stable it has ever been, of course, the nature of time, but it's more production ready now than it has ever been. And it feels like I can just code and it just works. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then Dan is commenting. So th there are multiple things um, that are at play here. So, you know, devs can use multiple types of tooling. Um, so uh, uh, Lance, did you remember using the Maui check uh, tooling that yes. uh, Reddit had come for? I don't know if that's still maintained as much as yeah. uh, what, what Dan is commenting about is like Uno check. Uh, if you're using Uno platform, you know, similar tech, slightly different. Um, but that also does help you uh, get those, you know, rollback files. Uh, so you have the versions of the workloads aligned. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and and every stack does the same thing. Like I was um, tinkering around with like Flutter Doctor, which tries to do the exact same thing. Uh, and also like iOS and Android dependencies are also tricky because they move and then the bands get out of, uh, you know, whack. So it's, you know, fun, fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. If you're going to start moving a project today, uh, just stick to whatever the SDK is for that release of Maui instead of trying to tweak it right now. And then after things are working, then you can play around with it a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the last headache you need to do is introduce mismatch dependencies. And um, you'll deal with that when you get time to publish into the store. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just oh, um, what, what is that sync namespaces thing? Where you had, you had right clicked on the project and there was an option that said sync namespaces. I don't think I've seen that. Uh, uh, yeah, what what is that? I don't know. Should I click it? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have never seen uh, that. I'm that. Yeah. Let, let's see. Okay, I don't know what yeah. it is. 
it might be for a different type of project. There's maybe sync the namespaces between projects. Yeah. 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 Okay, so um, yeah, we are already at the top of the hour, but Lance, I want to dig into the dirty details next time around. Okay, so yeah. show us each of your view models and models and views and everything in between that moved over, that immediately broke, uh, and then things that were needed to fix those things. And uh, did you do any re-architecturing of how the navigation works, how the views and view models work, or were they pretty much, uh, you know, good um, on their own? So I yep. want to dive into all of that. And um, uh, you might find this curious. Um, and, and Dan was actually at a conference uh, where I saw him uh, a few weeks back. Uh, I have an app uh, that is now, uh, I've spent like a couple of weeks on it, uh, your tooling looks way better than my tooling because you're you are on Windows, you are on Visual Studio. So just to make Maddie uh, and other folks happy, I have a .NET Maui app now that is written entirely in Visual Studio Code, which is a little limiting at this point. I can get around, so I don't have uh, hot reload right off the bat. Uh, IntelliSense has caught up quite a bit. Uh, I mean, it, it's fairly good, even for like if you bring in a NuGet package, it, it tries to give you IntelliSense. Uh, but I was using uh, our new Telerik uh, extension for VS Code, and uh, I have an app which I have, you know, fairly in a working state built entirely with, uh, with VS Code. So things are coming along. It's not quite the same as Visual Studio uh, on Windows, but if you're on a Mac, Visual Studio code is coming along nicely. And you know, right as we speak, uh, Lance is opening up the same project in, in VS Code. And this is, um, the past six months have been amazing for this. You can run and debug, you can do a whole bunch of stuff in VS yeah. Code that you yeah. couldn't do with C Sharp and XAML projects in the past. So. Yeah, yeah, and and that really Mac is going to... away, so you need something there. You need yeah. something to work really mm -hmm. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Leo Maris Reyes, uh, she she made a post of all the you know details of the dates. I think I mean it's it's coming from David Ortno, but VS for Mac also has like an August uh, 2024 um, timeline of when it'll be stopped maintaining. Again, it doesn't mean that the next day it's going to catch on fire but it's not going to get the updates or the SDKs or anything else. So use it, but uh, just know that it's going away. I am um, entirely on VS Code these days. Yeah, uh, look at all these great features from the Don and Maui um, yeah, extension. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah um, uh, Dan is saying uh, VS Code cannot launch a real app. Um, no, that, that might be you, Dan, because it, it does launch the simulators for me. Uh, maybe it just needs to be rewired or somehow. Uh, maybe the Maui maybe extension needs to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, it, it does a fairly good job of, uh, and, and down at the bottom here, uh, Lance can show you, uh, is a squiggly that tells you which uh, target uh, framework and which device to use. So you can actually switch that around uh, pretty easily. Um, yeah, so it's come a long way. It uh, doesn't do XAML IntelliSense as well, uh, and it doesn't do... Uh, hot reload, but I have built a fairly small app, but uh, built entirely with VS Code and using the build systems that are in there. Um, yeah. But to be honest, I still use Parallels, switch over to Windows on my Mac, and do the yeah. development there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's totally fine. Like uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Daniel. Uh, Hindrikes, I, I cannot pronounce his last name right. He's Swedish, but uh, he he will not use VS Code. He is doing parallels and the coherence or whatever that mode is, where you are you don't even realize you are on a Mac, but you are using a Windows app because you are using Visual Studio. Yeah. So you know, use whatever floats your boat. Uh, yeah. These are tools for us to get our stuff done. Uh, I am consciously trying to use VS Code, and it's okay. It's okay. I use it all the time for many many other things i just haven't made it part of my daily workflow uh yeah. for maui but it's getting there like i be. it maybe once a week i do try it right i go in and i try to do different things and uh, it gets better every single time so. yep yep all right folks so i am going to highlight uh this thing one more time this is the app that uh lance is talking about it's a crm app that's actually in stores on ios android and windows 
if you go and get it right now, you're going to get the Xamarin Forms version. Uh, and then that's the you know, source code uh, that you know, Lance has been working through. Um, the evolved version of .NET MAUI, uh, that's not out yet, right, Lance? No. Yeah, OK. So you're looking at very, very hot bits here. Lance is going to walk us through. Uh, so this is the source code here, the GitHub repo. This is the Art Gallery CRM app. If you wanted to take a look at a full real-world Xamarin app, Xamarin Forms app, you can go check it out. Uh, this is what you get from the stores uh, anyways. But the reimagined app uh, that's all modern, uh, done with .NET MAUI, the source code for that and the app itself uh, out to the stores, those are not out yet. Uh, Lance is kind of walking us through the journey, and we're going to do that uh, soon-ish. Um, so it's a nice evolution. Uh, kind of seems like an end of an era in, in some ways, right? Uh, yeah. With this, with the Xamarin days, like I, some of us are old, and and we remember uh, the early days of Xamarin, and you know Xamarin Evolve, and and those guys, yeah. you know, tried running as as fast as they could. Uh, so it does feel like the end of an era, but it's also the evolution of what modern cross platform .NET uh, looks like. Yeah, I'm extremely ecstatic about where it's come. Like I, like I said, I'm from Boston. I was here in oh, yeah, Cambridge yeah. when Miguel was just starting to explain what Xamarin is. Yeah. Uh, he was trying to take me and like, what is, you know? Uh, and then Microsoft has taken it on and turned it into a real part of .NET. Like, yeah. this is the future. It is now. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, um, uh, Dan is reminding us of Zam Dev Summit. I don't know if Lance, if you made it to one of these. I, I did. Uh, so this was uh, it was hot in Houston that Dan put together a Xamarin uh, Dev conference because Evolve wasn't happening. Um, so uh, you know, maybe maybe one of these days we all go to Maui and <laughs> do a Maui thing in Maui. Yeah. I'll, I'll put the uh, the expense request in now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, good times, good times. All right, uh, uh, Lance, if you uh, are done for the day, I'm going to bring your desktop uh, down here. Uh, but thank you for uh, spending an hour here with me. I am really excited to dig in more. Uh, so folks, uh, come back next Thursday. We're going to get uh, Lance back on to talk through uh, the real grimy details about moving over uh, Xamarin Forms app uh, with the views, models, and view models and everything that goes into it, into .NET MAUI, what had to change, and uh, how everything was wired back up. So um, uh, Lance is giving us the behind-the-scenes look before the app is published and you know put out, uh, the source code is put out. Yeah. Uh, oh, hold on. A uh, question here from Thindle. Uh, when can I use the actual Telerik CRM app for my CRM needs? Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't think it's meant to do that. Uh, well, I mean, you could actually swap out the the URL to your Azure backend, and there's your CRM. Good yeah, to go. Yeah. yeah, there's a Salesforce uh, joke in there somewhere, but let's let's not go there. Uh, CRM is difficult. It's it's a difficult business to be in, but. Lens, thank you so much uh, for one building this app and then taking the time and the pain to migrate things over and then sharing the journey with us. Take care, uh, be productive, be well. We'll see you next week. All right, bye, folks. Bye now.